So, it's been kind of a long time since I've really done anything. I kind of let myself uh, get caught up in doing occasional streams where I didn't, you know, have to put too much effort into editing and all that stuff. And I kind of, you know, missed some important news involving the new Resident Evil movie, which is pretty much all the worthwhile Resident Evil news that has come out as of late, because game and DLC news has been pretty dry for a while. So even though I'm a little late, I want to talk through the photos that have been released for the Welcome to Raccoon City movie. Um, some, like the really big ones, I saw the day they were released. And some like on-set photos, I didn't know were out until I just now saw them. So I figured, you know, if you're interested and haven't seen them, I'd, uh, I'll show them and talk about them. And basically, I'll give my way too early opinion on how I think the movie will do, and if I think the movie will be good, and all that stuff. And if you want to look through all of the photos that we know of, or, you know, you'd rather just look at them than hear me talk over them, I'll link the wiki page that has all these photos I'm looking at. I'm not sure if they're all 100% confirmed to be real, authentic, but... Based on you know, the based on what I've seen, they all look to be real on-set photos, so I don't really think there's any reason to speculate about these. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the very first photo. And this is one that I feel like most everyone has seen. Here we have four characters from Resident Evil 1 standing in the woods. So presumably at the very beginning of the movie, before they go into the mansion... And if you're like me, you probably were wondering who some of these characters were, like who they're trying to portray in this image. Now, I could easily tell that the guy to the left is Chris, um, but honestly, I did not think the woman there was Jill, but uh, considering she's the only member of the stars, oh, I'm going to sound dumb if I get this wrong. They're the alpha team, right? The Bravo team went missing, so they're... <laughs> I, uh, I'm not even going to check. I'm pretty sure the Alpha team, but yeah. Rebecca's the woman on the Bravo team. Jill is the woman on the Alpha team. So it, it's got to be Jill, and it is Jill if you look at the actress. Which brings me to a pretty universal complaint that the chosen actors, actresses, don't exactly look like the source material characters. And yeah, that's obviously the case. And it is disappointing. And not even from like, you know, you can't go out of your way to get an actor and actress that have the same facial structure, everything that looks like Leon and Jill and Chris and Claire. But my issue is the fact that like her hair is nothing like Jill's hair. The outfit isn't what Jill's wearing in Resident Evil 1. She just doesn't look like Jill. I looked at her and thought that that was just a character they added to, you know, make it different. So yeah, I've got no problem with the actress. I just don't get why they team, director, whoever's in charge of this, didn't, you know, have her dress up as Jill, you know, just make her look as Jill-like as possible, because this, I, I don't see many similarities, you know. Now, this isn't a huge deal, it's a nitpick, but I still think it should have been done a little differently. Chris looks more like Chris from the games, but, you know, I'd say Chris is more of a generic-looking guy than Jill is a <laughs> generic-looking girl. At least in Resident Evil 1, when, you know, when 5 rolls around, Chris, you know, I mean, his face is still kind of generic, but, you know, the, the muscles and all that, but whatever. I spent way too long on this. Here's the next image, uh, Chris and Jill and um, two other guys in the lobby. I'm pretty sure I heard that that was Barry and Wesker, but the description on the wiki image actually says that it, that's Richard, not Barry. And uh, you'll see that Richard actually seems like he's going to have a much bigger role in this movie than he had a role in the games, which I think is good. They're going to need more supporting cast to make, you know, like a feature film like the movie interesting. And uh, maybe this would imply that the story starts off from Chris's uh, perspective. Because, um, you know, in the games, when he plays Chris, Jill is in the lobby with you, but Barry's missing. And when you play as Jill, Barry's with you, but Chris is missing. Honestly, that might have no implications at all here. Probably won't, but you know, it's just worth thinking about. And here's Leon and Claire. Not much to say about them that hasn't already been said. I think the outfits look pretty decent, honestly. 
Obviously, Claire not having the signature ponytail, it's kind of weird, but you know, it's not something bothering me all that much. Leon having a mustache is also kind of weird, and him not having, you know, the signature Leon haircut is pretty off-putting. But, you know, temper my expectations, you know. Who says Leon's gotta have the Leon haircut? Nothing else needs to be said. And lastly, here's the um, final main screenshot that was released, man, was it two weeks ago now? And this one's of Lisa Trevor. And this is one that genuinely got me excited for the movie, because this looks creepy. This gives me horror movie vibes, and I would love for this movie to be scary. I don't think it'll be scary. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Lisa looks really creepy, and, like, the fact that she's got, like, hair coming out of her mom mask is pretty creepy. And I just think she genuinely, I mean, she looks good, and, you know, she looks creepy good. <laughs> so I'd originally thought that these were just the shots that we had gotten, but when I was looking more in-depth into them and on the wiki, I saw that there were some on-set things, some that seemed to be leaked and some I guess were intentionally released but these kind of give a you know look into how it was filmed as well as some of the uh, environment that we've yet to see so I think these are worth giving a look at so here we've got a couple shots of the underside of a bridge with a you're now leaving Raccoon City sign and I mean there's not too much to be said about it I mean it's a you know graffitied up bridge with a raccoon city sign so there isn't really much you can look to find fault in here we also have a number of pictures of the front of the rpd as it's being constructed as well as different angles of it i don't think there's i can't tell if any of these pictures are fully constructed i don't think they are but you know with green screen magic it's not like they have to build a ton of you know physical props to make a whole building so i mean I, I like the way it looks it reminds me a lot of the game there's this one with the the gate in the front that you know if you remember from the beginning of the game when you run to the rpd you have to go through this little gate and i i mean that looks pretty much how the gate <laughs> looks in the game from what i remember so i think this is really cool just to see how they built it and it looks like the RPD to me. We've also got a number of shots from what I can only assume to be the crash site from the beginning of Resident Evil 1. The helicopter looks pretty solid in my opinion and some shots showing like fallen trees in the area makes it look like a pretty authentic crash site. I'm sure there'll be some more you know effort post-production or whatever they do to make it look more like a crash site. I think in some of these images you like see blood on the window so maybe we'll get to see kevin all you real ones remember kevin moving on we have the samurai edge and richard eichen's stars badge now for the pistol i honestly couldn't tell you how accurate it is to the games because i've never paid that close attention to the weapons but it looks fine to me and the stars badge has some pretty nice details the name tag there too i just think it's interesting that we have Richard's stuff. Um, I'm not sure if the actor for Richard was just sharing this, but uh, I just think it's interesting that Richard's been so prominent with these um, shots that we have. Now this next picture is really interesting. Uh, on the wiki it says that this was shared by the actor of Richard, and you can see on the shells there that it references three of the main bosses from Resident Evil 1. And the two extra shells just reference the same enemies, but in a different way. So the reason I think this is so interesting is because Richard is known in the game for having a shotgun. And he can die in the game either by yawn, or if you save him during the yawn fight, he can die to Neptune. And I, I don't think he can die to Plant 42. Is it Plant 42? But he definitely doesn't have anything to do with the Crimson Head fight, which is what I'm assuming the uh, Crimson shell is for. So maybe these shells have no correlation to the enemies that Richard fights, but, you know, maybe in this universe we have here, he's going to be involved with all three of these boss enemies. 
But at the very least, I think that confirms that we'll be getting Yawn, the uh, boss Crimson Head, and Neptune all in the movie, which is great. Let's just hope they have really good CGI and Yawn and Neptune don't look awful. Next up, we have a couple shots from outside of Kendo's gun shop. And I really can't say much about it. We just have the neon sign. You can kind of see inside of it, but at the same time, the interior's probably not shot in the same building that this exterior shot's from. Probably. We don't know that for sure, but at the very least, we know that Kendo, well, at the very least, his gun shop is going to be in the movie. Now, here's some interesting shots of a place called Emmy's Diner. Now, obviously, this isn't a place in the games, but I'm sure there's reason for them to have a diner. The picture of the cherry pie, I'm assuming referencing herbs as in the healing items. If I had to take a guess, I'd say that this location is not going to have a big part in the movie. Maybe it's an introductory scene with some side characters and zombie outbreak. I don't know. You know just speculation, but... There are a number of shots on the uh, wiki of this place, if you want to look at them in more detail. But as of right now, this place is kind of a mystery to me. But what is not a mystery to me is what is in this image, which was apparently shown by Chris's actor. So we can only assume that herbs will actually be in the movie, I guess. I don't know how they're going to make that work, because it's such a weird thing to think about. How are they going to heal themselves with herbs? in a way that does not seem completely cartoonish. Of course, there's a chance that these were just on set as decorations, and maybe they just appear in the movie as Easter eggs, but maybe they're going to have a bigger role. Now, for the last image that I'm going to talk about, we have this clapperboard that says, For the Fans. And there's a few other images on the wiki that also have this For the Fans slogan. And I can only assume that that means, you know, this movie is for the fans of Resident Evil, as in the fans of the games. And I think that's a really nice sentiment. I mean, maybe it'll end up meaning nothing <laughs> in the long run, but if the people making this movie genuinely care about Resident Evil as a franchise, I have a feeling it's going to do well. But after looking at all these pictures... Um, it covers a lot of ground, you know, knowing that we have Kendo's Gun Shop, the Samurai Edge, possibly Herbs, Yawn and Neptune. I mean, that's a lot of stuff that, you know, people would probably be concerned not making the cut because this is probably around a two hour movie that we're fitting two games into. And that is my main concern for this movie. How are they going to do the story's justice of these two games and not make it feel like a rushed mess. Because granted, these two games don't have the most complex stories, but for a movie to tell a story well, it needs to be paced correctly. So they're going to have to add certain parts to both Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2 story, or they're going to have to somehow intertwine those two separate stories well. Because... You know, they're not going to just show all of Resident 1, Resident 1, Resident Evil 1, and then move on for the second half of the movie to Resident Evil 2. That's just so abrasive. I, I don't think there's any way they do that. So I do think they're going to take a lot of liberties. And when Resident Evil media takes liberties from source material, we know sometimes that doesn't go over well with the fans. But hey, if this movie truly is for the fans... Maybe everything will work out fine, and there'll be no angry mobs. At least there's no clock tower to worry about in this movie, so there won't be any pitchforks and torches coming for the director for cutting out a clock tower. Oh wait, there actually is a clock tower. Promise me you guys won't get upset if they cut out this one though.